hello friends welcome back a couple of days back uh, i posted whether you wanted to see how i am going to mount this brassavula orchid on a terracotta plate and some of you wanted to see that so here is the quick video I will quickly tell about the Brassavola care as well. This particular one is Brassavola David Sander. The blooms they look like this. And I have one Brassavola nodosa for uh, over two years now. And um, I have many Brasso cattleyas and Brasso lilia cattleyas orchid. I prefer keeping my uh, Brassavola or Brassavola Alliance orchids in a uh, mounted condition and if at all I am potting them then I like potting them in a well draining mix of charcoal and uh, brick pieces. Uh, this one you can see it's potted in uh, coconut chips as media. I had got it last month. I didn't repot immediately. My schedule simply didn't permit me to do so. You can see the media is decomposing and uh, I suspect the plant doesn't have a good root system. As coconut husk it retains a lot of water and the ventilation is poor in it. So not very great for um, growing Brassavola or Brassocatlia type of orchids. They prefer very well draining airy mix and they don't like to stay constantly wet. They like to dry out in between waterings. So as I suspected the plant doesn't have a good root system. Just a few viable roots here and there. Uh, the good thing is that I see a few new, new roots uh, starting so the transition is going to be smooth. The new roots they will take up the mount uh, easily. I have watered it thoroughly so that it becomes easy to remove the media from around the roots. You can see there is some moss as well. This is probably from the original moss plug. Uh, be gentle no need to pull out um, any uh, media if it's not coming we can always soak it some more or can uh, show it under tap water and uh, clear the media now i'll chop off the dead roots uh, the dead mushy uh, feeling roots it's best to touch and feel each root before cutting if it's feeling empty if it's feeling mushy then you can uh, remove it be gentle, we don't want to cut any healthy roots. I have removed most of the media and chopped off the dead roots. I will just go and clean the roots to get rid of any decomposing media by showing under running tap water. Here I am back with the clean orchid which has a very poor root system. Now let me spray a bit of 3% hydrogen peroxide on the roots. Because you know things are not looking great and we don't know if there are any bugs or creatures in the media. To get rid of uh, them I will just spray a little 3% hydrogen peroxide. Not only fungus, bacteria, hydrogen peroxide will also take care of snails and snail eggs if they are uh, there in the media. And and coconut husk, I don't know uh, uh, why, but I have found uh, most of my orchids when I receive in coconut husk, they are harboring some sort of uh, snails uh, in it. So just let me spray hydrogen peroxide. If you get 3% solution, no need to dilute, you can spray directly. Now I have sprayed thoroughly. You can hear a fizzing noise. That's the peroxide uh, uh, working. Uh, wait for the fizz to stop before uh, mounting the plant. No need to wash it again with water. I have my terracotta plate here. There is no specific reason why I chose it. Uh, it just looks cool and uh, I just love mounting orchids. Uh, I feel that it's the closest way that we can uh, replicate uh, how they grow in nature. My uh, hot and humid climate, tropical type of climate actually permits me to do so. It's not difficult for me to maintain mounted orchids. But if you live in a very dry climate, then you may face, uh, find it challenging to maintain a mounted orchid. And mounted orchids, they just look so cool. I have a fan and two ferns mounted uh, in a similar way on a terracotta plate. And they are happy and uh, they are doing great. So I thought I would try this one on a terracotta plate as well. 
I have made some holes around the plate. Uh, these are for the thread to pass. Uh, I it's not quite difficult to um, make these holes. I simply made this by um, uh, hitting a, a nail on the plate on the terracotta plate. Uh, I have uh, soaked a little moss here. First, I lay a layer of uh, sphagnum moss on the plate, and then I'll place the orchid on top of it. Put a bit moss around the roots. The moss will help retaining moisture and facilitate new roots growth. I will pass the thread through the holes and uh, go on fixing the plant. Thread may be cotton or plastic thread, uh, anything of your choice, a fishing line may be. I will pass the thread in a crisscross uh, manner, holding one end of the thread so that it doesn't um, come off the other side. You can secure uh, a knot at the beginning. There is no rocket science, you just uh, gotta do whatever you can. The end goal should be to fix the orchid to the mount. It should be stable. So after passing the thread uh, several times, I am done now. Tying a knot at the back to secure everything. Let me check. No, the plant is not stable. I'll have to tie a bit more. This time I'll pass the thread right across the plant and tie it to the uh, mount. Okay, so now we are done. You can see it's very very stable. Now I just have to attach a hook or something to hang the mount and uh, there we are good to go. A few things that we have to keep in mind while mounting orchids. Don't bury the pseudobulbs or leaves inside the moss. Cover only the root portion. This holds good also for the potted orchids. Always it's wise to keep the base of the orchid, the pseudobulbs and the leaves free. The base should just uh, sit uh, on top of the media. This way we won't face any issues relating to rotting. Uh, don't crush any parts of the plant while tying the thread. Sometimes the thread may cut through the structure so be careful. And third as I said earlier fix well. We don't want a wobbly plant. If you fix well they will root well. We will hang it in shade for a few days here in my balcony. It will only receive bright light and no direct light for a week or so. After that I will move it to a place in my balcony where it will get direct morning sunlight for an hour or two for a month or so. When it is well established and the roots they take up the mount I will then move it to my terrace where I grow my other higher light requiring orchids like my cattleyas, vandas and dendrobiums. There it will receive both dappled morning and late afternoon sunlight and bright light rest of the day. And it will stay protected during the very hot noon sun under the shade net. Now coming to watering, as I said earlier, these orchids, they like to dry out in between waterings. I live in Bhubaneswar. Here the temperature and humidity both are high. Brasovolas and Brasovola Alliance orchids, Cattleya orchids, they love um, my climate. I will spray the mount daily. Uh, during May or June, I will have to do so twice daily as these months, they are the hottest months and the plants, they dry out very fast. I won't fertilize it now. I will wait for the roots to grow at least for a month or so. Then I will start feeding it with liquid seaweed extract and Epsom salt every 15 to 20 days all round the year as rest of my orchids. Brassavolas they are easy to care for and not very demanding. To sum up they need a cattleya like care. Very very bright light. Uh, they won't mind even direct uh, morning or late afternoon sunlight and they need a regular feeding uh, uh, either with organic or inorganic fertilizers in order to flower and to flourish. So that's all friends that's how I mount my uh, orchids and that's how I care for my Brasovola type of orchids. So if you like this video then do give a thumbs up and if you haven't already then please subscribe to my channel and keep supporting. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.